Welcome back to the out the Aristocrats at Weirdly Adventure Anime Review Episode Number Two. Here we're discussing episodes thirteen and fourteen. Now, these episodes I'm looking forward to watching the debut because I read the manga version of this stuff and I'm like, wow, it's been interesting watching the anime. And here we are. So basically, in the case of episode number, you now we're discussing episodes three and four. Basically, in the case of three, they're all, the, basically the the Kane and his family are all the way to the capital. We're basically showing all the magic, and by the way, the tools are gone. They'll be back. Don't worry about that. And of course, well, and on the way there, and they of course uses search, which is the ability he got last episode, and he finds well in the distance that oh, people being attacked, like a big monster attack. So knights, uh, basically. Grim sends out his knights to go do it, but Kane's like, nah, I'll, my, my, my way is faster. He uses boost to get past the knights, and he shows up and he helps out all the knights. He basically shows up and basically eliminates all the orcs by himself and basically heals any knights that are still alive and has the ones that are deceased uh, put in his item storage, his item box, to take it back to the families, which, of course, soldiers are very appreciative of him doing that. Yep. And, of course... That's when, well, his father shows up, like, he sees in the carriage, like, oh, crap, this is a duke's carriage. And who comes out? Why, two very lovely little ladies. These ladies being... Silk Fonsana, voiced by K Kate Oxley. Yep, daughter of the duke, and got the same hair color. As well as, well, the main character. Which in the king, wait a minute. First fiance and he's got the same color and character as the main character? Like, why does this sound so familiar? Yes, reminds me a lot of the world's deadly assassin gets reincarnated in the world as an aristocrat. And also the third princess of the kingdom. Third princess uh, of the kingdom, voiced by the awesome Leah Clark, Tessia Terra Asfor. Yes. Leah Clark in the 35th anime I've seen her in now. 35. Wow, 35. They introduce themselves, and because of their thing, of course, because they're going to the capital, which take a while, they get there about a week. They agree, they basically just kidnap them, basically force in the carriage. And it's like, hey, so we're going to stay in place. Why did he travel with us? And it's like, it's a very cramped carriage. Like, would, like no, keep close to me. Like, because basically they're just very attached to them. And despite that, he could see him later. No, there's a day in the room. Like, sleep in the same room. Like, oh, the way he envisioned it is like, one bed at one side and the other two on the other. So, then he gets the room. Like, not exactly no, but it's three separate beds. And, like, it, and like I want to sit next to Kane. I want to sit next to Master Kane. Yeah, the con master. So, by the way, they, he, they insist to call them by, by their first names, not by their titles. Or Miss, in the case of Silk, just by their names. So, Silk gets the one on the left, and Kane gets the middle, and Tails gets the one on the right. So, then, of course, they come up with the strange idea to push three beds together, the two beds together, to form one big giant bed. And, of course, they spend the night together. And, no, they do not do anything adult, because they're ten-year-olds, so... Yeah, and then they do this for quite a while. Of course, they see, oh, he has apparently not slept very well because they apparently use him as a body pillow. Yes, seriously. He doesn't say it per se, but yeah. So he couldn't sleep, and then, then of course, they arrive at the castle. Then, of course, we're introduced to the uh, vice cap, the, basically the vice captain. Yep. If I can find it here. Here we go.
uh, Hagen, um, I'm trying to find the guy's name here. Sorry about this. Oh, D I A D I A M. Maybe I misspelled it. Here it is, uh, Dom von Guest. No credit was dub actor. Let me see if I can find out basically the voice because he sounded very familiar. Sound like I don't think it was Rico per se, but let's see if we can find it here. Yeah, I'm trying to find out right now who voices him, but he appears in the scene here. He does thank the can he does thank uh Kane for bringing back the Trying to find it here. Ah, here we go. All right, let's see. They apparently don't list off exactly who voices in per se no there's no credit for the english that back there so then of course basically gets got these knights here he's immediately brought before the king voiced by chris george yes seriously the king of the country that kane lives in is voiced by chris george i believe that's correct Yeah, Chris George. Which, yeah, this is some guy. This is one guy who I have met. So, other ones basically in these four episodes. The other ones officially I have met in person is Leah Clark, and Chris George. Yep. Uh, when I met him at, it was Shogi Expo 2022, which there was one was one this year for reasons unexplained. So. Yeah, he's the voice of the king. He's a big guy. So, then pretty much basically, as a thank you for saving his daughter's life and the daughter of the duke, he's immediately bestowed a title of Baron. Plus a mansion and ten platinum coins. There is one noble who objects to this, who plays a role later on in the next episode. The, the manager of won't make appearance until a little bit later. It's not right away. So, then he has a private meeting with him, where... It's like, and if I was like, okay, so you have me with the king. Wow, you just you're just here for your debut because it's a noble thing. So, the duke and the king agree to this. To have, to have Cain take their daughter's hands in engagement to be married. And of course, he doesn't have much of a choice in the matter. So, and of course, they call him a philanderer because he hangs up more than one woman. Yep, and in the very next episode, 
they have the TV party, they have the proper public interaction between two characters. Oh, by before this, uh, Kane, ha- well, his sister, ran to take him shopping. So, he stops, now in, in the, I remember in the, in the manga version of the scene here, now, Pem, who is his childhood friend, who was just introduced back in episode one via sort of a quick cameo, though her introduction was weirdly changed, not sure why, but it was, because I remember that when, when they first introduced in the manga, that she was introduced, like, she apparently got lost looking for her father, Kane just happened to find her, and we're now with her father, first her father thanked her, and of course she didn't know the fact that he she was hanging out with a son of basically a lord. So he thanked them and they moved on. Here that now in the book basically he's already she's already working for her uncle. In the anime excuse me, she's already starting the course she she he meets her uncle, whose name is Cat. So then of course makes makes it like and like basically make an item like turn on the shop makes now basically this game called Reversi. Basically, it's kind of like version of Checkers, which you're thinking, wait, did we just see this in another anime you just reviewed? Yes, it's the same exact game used in Farming Life in their world. Yes, a little the same exact game in two straight anime. Okay, that's just by sheer coincidence. They just had to be in the way, and also. Farmer Life Never World aired from January to March of this year. This anime aired from April to June. Yes. So this anime was going on this year while I was working on other stuff. So moving on. So to make the item, of course, they, of course, uh, he makes it right away. He, of course, has the God of Commerce bless it, and, of course, they patent it. Oh, in, in the manga, they actually do give a reason why this altar is here. Because he's the president of a small company, he does not get time to go to church, so he creates this altar so let so he can definitely say he's gone to the church. So okay, so he can talk to the gods, God of commerce. Now they go a little more detail with this in the manga, and you're probably thinking, Am I surprised the yeah, anime cut this out? No, because they want to keep the story for that's more of a small minor thing. It doesn't really affect the story at all, the fact it was cut. No, not really. I have no issue with it at all. So then, of course, we have the AV party. And, of course, basically, where <laughs> Kane basically, well, meets everybody and, of course, gives uh, te- gives gives Silk compliments. Where she's like, oh, I'm thinking of our princess. And he's like, behave yourself. I'm like, dude, she's giving, like, do the Duke. You do know that your future son-in-law is giving your daughter compliments. Which she's loved the compliments. In my opinion, give people good compliments is a good thing. And of course, meets with the qu- meets the princess, taking it for a goddess. And of course, the king's like, ahem. <laughs> and of course, like, talk to my daughter properly. I'm like, he's giving her compliments. Let's all give him compliments. I mean, not terrible. And of course, shows up like made a game where. The fa- of course, Grammy's been ups- a bit upset. Uh, he's uh, a bit disappointed the fact he didn't tell him about it. But he's a baron. He's basically looking out for himself because he's worried he might run out of money. Because, well, he is a 10 year old kid. He's working for himself now. And then, of course, he runs across where then we have Tessie, where she she's like, like requests, like, oh, can I call you Kane instead of Master Kane? Yeah, then we have. Like, oh, with Vice Count, he's like, and they think he's something because they think he's poor, and they show off their bogus magic, and then, of course, she properly induces him, where he is the son of the Mulgrave, and he's an actual Baron. Not the son of the Baron, he is the Baron. And, of course, basically, in range to keep this low-key, she asks him to take him on a date, to take her on a date, which he agrees to. And then Tessie shows up, and, and of course, like, they had to say, like, oh, because he put his hand on an unmarried woman's lips, which apparently is a no-no in this world. Probably because it was bare hand, not glove hand. So, she agrees to keep a secret from Te- from Silk's father in, in exchange for a date. And then her father shows up, it's like, really, you plan to take my daughter on a date? He's like, yes. Perhaps we'll have a discussion now with that game to calm my nerves. 
And they have the game, and then of course, basically, the Duke of the King puts her hands on his shoulder and nearly crushes the soldiers via Flanderer because he's playing around with two girls. I'm like, he's engaged to two cute, cute girls. And, well, any kid his age basically be happy with that. I mean, he's not doing anything adult with them, he just give them compliments. I mean, I don't see he's doing anything wrong. From, from my perspective, he's being a proper gentleman. He's not, you know, being a pervert. Yeah, he's not like, you know, doing anything wrong. I don't see he's doing anything wrong. Not necessarily. But these two are two really good episodes. I'm thoroughly enjoying, still enjoying watching the series so far. And there's only, sadly, eight episodes left. Now, oh, I forgot to mention this in my last review. The studio is to make this one. Uh, the, the first one is EMT Squared. That's the name of the company. Uh, have I come across any series they made? Yes, I have. Love Tyrant. Drugstore in the world. Okay. And that's it. Just two for that one. You're thinking, okay, interesting. How about Magic Bus, the other company that basically makes this? Well, so this one uh, for this company here, this is, uh, from the look of the shows they have on here, this is the first series they that I, have wor that I basically have seen that they've worked on. Yeah, but it's a co-production. Yeah. One of the two I've seen they work on. All they own is Shoots of Gold of the Future. Which, from what I can tell, is a soccer manga. Yeah, but this is something quite weird, though, where the fact that this particular anime aired just last year. The manga was like, they had six six volumes of the manga for almost before so 13 years. Yeah, it's a soccer manga. Okay. Would I watch it? Uh, I have no plans to, per se. No. Now, some of you probably be asking, Nick, do you have a problem with sports manga? Not really. I'm just not interested. That's just the thing. I'm not interested in sports manga. Not at all. Or sports TV anime. I'm just not interested at all. I don't mind its element of an episode, but a whole series about it? Not interested. Like, I've seen episodes that focus on these elements, like, in the case case closed, a few of us focus on baseball, or in some cases soccer. Have a whole series on it. Not interested. I mean, it's not. It's not something I'm bigly interested. In. Mostly for me, it's action. It's mostly action or fantasy driven stuff I'm interested. In. Or in the case of stuff like this, basically harem animes. I love harem animes. They're just so fun. Just to smile at the fact that you have, yeah, this yeah, this guy be so lucky to be invited. Be have all these women to fetch weird with him. <laughs> yeah, that's how I am. I like. That's how I am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please don't judge me because I like these type of anime. I mean, you might think, oh, do I? Well, I just enjoy them because I just simply smile every time. Basically, at this, I just. I mean, this particular one. Uh, watching this series, how really excited I am watching this one. It has me have a similar feel to that of a series I watched at the start of this year. That's how McGrath is a slime. That's my feeling, feeling with it. It's just so exciting. Even if it's only 12 episodes, but it's still really good. Yep. But yeah, that's particularly a particular view. Next up is Dr. Stone. Get next to you. Bye.